If you actually understand basic math, this should be a very easy problem to solve without using a calculator. Let's take a look at the question. We have 8 times 2 over 2 divided by 8. Now we do have a multiple choice question here and let's take a look at our answers. So A is 1, B is 1 fourth, C is 64, and D is 4. Okay, so once again, no calculators, but if you think you know the answer, put that into the comment section. I wanna walk through exactly how to solve this problem step by step. But before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, come on over to my site, tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like, and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so one more time, we have a very simple math problem, but a lot of people are going to get this wrong. Okay, so eight times two over two divided by eight. Let's take a look at exactly how to solve this problem right now. Before we get into the actual math here, for those of you that are students and still have to take math tests and exams, never leave a math question blank especially a multiple choice question. So if you're looking at this uh, problem and you're like, I don't know what to do, but maybe this two and this two cross cancel, and this is eight divided by eight, maybe one is the right answer. Matter of fact, that is a fantastic guess. Unfortunately, it is wrong. But still, uh, taking a guess is always better than leaving a question blank. But to guarantee that you're going to get the right answer, you simply just need to know the math. So let's get into that right now. And the first place that we need to start is the order of operations. So hopefully you're familiar with this acronym right here called PEMDAS. This is a checklist that goes from left to right. And in mathematics, a mathematical operation is something like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, powers, parentheses, etc. So in this particular problem, we have multiplication and division. And this fraction bar right here is actually division as well. But there is another thing going on in this problem that is not so obvious and uh, gets a lot of students confused. So let's talk about this right now. Now, before I explain PEMDAS as it relates specifically to this problem, let's just do a quick review of what this means. Okay, so again, when you have a math problem, we need to do, uh, do the problem in the proper order of operations. So we need to start here with P. Now, P stands for parentheses. So if we have any parentheses or brackets like this or squiggly brackets like so, we're going to start there. Now, if you have some parentheses that are brackets like this in a math problem, you will start with the innermost parentheses and work your way out. Okay, now, not every math problem will have parentheses, but if it does, this is where you're going to start. Now, E stands for exponents, and an exponent is this little number right here in a power. So two to the third power, three is the exponent, and two is the base. So you can think of exponents as powers. So if you have any powers, that's what you're going to do next. Now, M, D, A, and S stand for multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. So the next thing that you're going to do is not just multiplication. We want to look at multiplication and division as a group. So you're gonna do any multiplication and division you have from left to right. This is an area that a lot of people confuse. And then when you're done with all multiplication and division, you'll move on to any addition and subtraction and do that from left to right as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and think about PEMDAS when, um, as it pertains to this problem right here. Okay, so let's just kind of ask ourselves, do we have any parentheses like so? Well, remember, P stands for grouping symbols, okay? And there is a grouping symbol going on in this problem that is not so obvious. So uh, grouping symbols can be things that group numbers together, right? So if I have like two plus three divided by seven, I can group two and three together like so, or maybe I can group three and seven, uh, this division part right here by parentheses, right? So I can group numbers using uh, these uh, notations or this notation, parentheses or brackets. 
but that's not the only way I could group numbers. Matter of fact, this division symbol right here in this fraction bar is in fact a grouping symbol. So in other words, this up here, this eight times two is like one group and two divided by eight is another group. So in this particular problem, if we're following the order of operations, we need to think of the numerator and the denominator as their separate groups. So if you want, you can actually add in parentheses like this just to make it very explicit that we have to do this work here separate from this work first. So in other words, we have to uh, handle all this math in the numerator all this math in the denominator separately and then we will simplify from there and we can kind of understand that with this p part of pemdas okay so do we have any uh powers any exponents no do we have multiplication and a division yes do we have any addition and subtraction no okay so really what we need to do here is start to uh simplify the respective numerator and denominator. Again, we are simply going to follow the order of operations to do this problem. So now that we know we're dealing with two groups here, in other words, the numerator and the denominator, we can start simplifying this basic math. And we could even put in some parentheses here just to make this extra clear. Okay, so eight times two is our numerator. Of course, that is 16. And in our denominator, we have two divided by eight. And we need to be careful here because this is a fraction. Two divided by eight means two over eight. So remember when you have a fraction like two over eight, the fraction bar is in fact the same thing as the division operation. Okay, so now we have 16 over two over eight. And what we have here is something called a complex fraction. Now, what we want to do before we go any further is simplify this 2 over 8. Okay, so 2 over 8 is the same thing as the fraction 1 fourth. So 2 over 8, you can divide 2 into 2 one time, and 2 goes into 8 four. So you always want to simplify and reduce your fractions even in the middle of a problem. Okay, so right now we have 16 divided by 1 fourth, and this type of fraction is called a complex fraction. Anytime you have a fraction where either the numerator or the denominator or both is in fact a fraction, this is called a complex fraction. So this is not that difficult to simplify. If you're enjoying the video so far, make sure to hit that subscribe button. This really does help me out on YouTube. And if you're gonna do that, hit that bell notification as well so you can get my latest videos. Now, again, a lot of people think they understand basic math better than they actually do. And really, it's no fault of their own. The longer you have been away from math, the more you will forget. So if you want a great quick review of basic mathematics, this is really, really important, especially if you have any desire to learn things like algebra. Check out my Math Foundations course. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. That will be a perfect start for all of you out there that want to kind of reestablish all these basic math skills that maybe you lost many years ago. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish up this problem. So only a few more steps until we get the final answer, but first we have to deal with this complex fraction. So we have 16 over the fraction 1 fourth. Now to deal with complex fractions, the easiest way to uh, do this is to change the fraction bar or to think of the fraction bar as the division operator. So we can rewrite this complex fraction as 16 divided by the fraction 1 fourth. Okay, so if we can figure this out, we will have the final answer. So how do we divide fractions? Well, 16 is really not a fraction, but if I had a fraction here, and I can make 16 into a fraction pretty easily as 16 over 1. But uh, just because it's not a fraction, we still need to treat this as a fraction division problem. And the way we uh, deal with fraction division problems is to go from division to multiplication by flipping the fraction to the right of the division symbol. Okay, so we're going to go from 16 divided by 1 fourth to 16 times 4 or 4 over 1. So if we flip 1 fourth upside down, we get 4 over 1. So really all we have to do is figure out what 16 times 4 is. 
which of course is going to be 64, which is our final answer. Okay, so how did you do? Well, if you got this problem right, you definitely get a nice little happy face and A plus A 100%. That is fantastic. Now, if you didn't get this right, as long as you learned something, that's the whole point of my videos. Now, again, if you want to uh, review basic math, make sure to check out my Math Foundations course. You can find a link to that in the description of this video. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.